Well, hello, everybody, and welcome back to Wake Up Into Your Dream. This is Barry Miracle, your dream coach. For the next 35 or so minutes, we are excited about this series that we're doing on creating with the creator. My, 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 last week was so amazing with, with Barb, Dr. Barbie Breathitt. If you did not see those, you need to go back. We got into some revelation about oneness with the creator and creating the brand new day and creating atmospheres and all that kind of stuff. But I am very excited about who I have you know, coming on with us today. And I'm just going to pull up her profile. It is, it is a pretty complete profile. Let me tell you, it's pretty amazing. This, this amazing creator and guys, uh, just before I introduce uh, my next guest, I want to say this to you. You came here on a purpose with a purpose to fulfill a purpose with more resources than you could use in 10 lifetimes. You are a nuclear bomb answer to the ant problems in your life. You, you need to know that you are already victorious. You need to know that you live from victory, not for victory. You live, my born again believers that are watching right now, you need to understand if you've accepted Jesus Christ, your personal savior, the spirit of righteousness has come on the inside of you. And you are living from righteousness every day, even on your worst day. Say this after me, Father God, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus on my worst day. We start and we end there. We There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. I'm a new creation. And we are talking about creating with the creator as a new creation. You're not creating with the creator as a, a, a mere man or a mere woman. You have become this brand new creation that is more than capable of ruling planets. Ah, we'll get into that. But anyway, this is my friend that I'm about to bring up to you. Her name is Toyin Crandall, and she is a pioneer in global uh, and a global authority in helping your brain think differently through neuroscience principles in order to scale business revenues, multi-million dollars. <laughs> Come on now. She does this by transforming the money mindset of business owners, executives, marketing, and sales teams in order to optimize their sales and organizational growth. The host, she's also the host of um, a podcast called, uh, let me see, the podcast is called Millionaire Money, Millionaire Money Podcast. And um, she's a best selling author. Uh, sought after speaker. She's been on about 69 different platforms all over the world. I am so honored and privileged and, and excited about my guest today. So without further ado, Toyin, can you come on the stage here today? Where hello, are you orange? hello, hello. Orange is, a, orange is a color of creativity. What are you That's doing? Right. That's <laughs> right. I came in the spirit. I'm ready already. You are ready. <laughs> she's, she's swinging for the fences. Come on. Thank you for having me, Barry. I am so excited to have this conversation with you. Well, I'll tell you, when we got on the phone the other day when I was inviting you, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago. Yes. And we started talking and you said, ah, <laughs> I love this stuff. And I was like, I'm so excited to have uh, Toyin on. We So we've been friends for, good Lord, 20 years? Years. Yeah, years. I don't even. Over, over 16 years, I think. At this I would point. say, yeah, at least that. Yeah. You know, through the cries and different other things, we've been hanging out with the Bobs, which is a band of yeah. brothers and sisters and all that kind of stuff. But uh, I just, I honor you. Uh, I love your journey. Oh. I love your authenticity. I love oh. your excitement. I I, I love um, you and Joshua. We are yeah. still praying for you guys daily. Thank you. Come on. I, 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 I mean, I say daily because Tammy and I have shifted our prayer that we don't go through our list every day, mm. but um, because he, he wants more intimacy out of us in this scene, mm. so we're That's spending good. more time in worship and focusing on him. That's and good. Then we'll a few things, but, but, but consistently we are bringing you Come on. And, and Joshua before the, the throne of God and, and just, but we, we, um, we trust you. We, 
we see value in what you bring to the kingdom of God and God just put you in our hearts. And I, I get excited whenever I see you guys at different conferences and churches and different Likewise. places. Likewise, I'm like, come on, glo glory, bury with the glory. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. And I and I, I also want to say just how much we love and honor you, yourself and Tammy Berry. Like you yeah. guys have just been solid from day one, from day one. Yeah, amen. <laughs> before, before people knew, you know, Toy and Crandall, Money Mindset, Shift, Millionaire Money Podcast, all the things y'all yeah. have been, y'all have been there holding it down with us in the uh, work of the kingdom, and yeah. we are just so blessed and grateful to yeah. have you guys as family. Yeah. Well, hey, ask me how Tammy's doing. How's Tammy doing? Tammy is like yud hey wah hey. She's the same yesterday, today, <laughs> and forever. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> she she's the rock of our family, and we're so Come so on. grateful to have her. So no. And your your husband Joshua just absolutely creative. I follow him on in, Instagram. Yeah, in, what you call it, Insta base. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, but anyway, uh, love what your family's doing. And Thank you. but anyway, I got a couple questions before we get into the the meat and the potatoes of today. All okay. right. If Toyin could be uh, described as anything to the world, what would that be? I mean, I had two words that don't that kind of make sense together, but don't make sense together. It go. was so, but I'm gonna give one word and just mash them together. Get it her. would be power bomb. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to be known as the power bomb. The power bomb. Yeah, um, that's your wrestling name. <laughs> uh, exactly. Like, uh, just oh, if if I say what I want to be known as. Yeah. It is someone who was surrendered to Jesus and Jesus just did crazy, crazy, crazy things. And like yeah. that, the, the, that, the word over my life, when I gave my life to Jesus, uh, really, really in 2000 and not, was 2008, around that time. Yeah. Um, and he said, you will see what I will do with a life that is fully surrendered to me. And it wasn't until later that I saw that he said the same thing to D.L. Moody. When I read that in D.L. Moody's biography, yeah. I was like, yeah. let's go, Jesus. Um, <laughs> just since giving my life to him, not yeah. just as a good teacher, but as my Lord and my Savior. Yeah. My, I thought Christianity was boring. Honestly, oh. I, I'm a pastor's kid. I grew up in yeah. church. Yeah. I thought Christianity was all rules and boring. Yeah. Gave my life to Jesus, and I've had the wildest yes you have i've been watching from the <laughs> sidelines watching your journey you know, like who boring huh <laughs> yeah no, 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 no. absolute antithesis of boring yes yeah so this is what i have people say oftentimes uh when i have you and you know how I, how I preach and i have people help me preach because i yes. have them confess a bunch yes because there's power in your own word come on so i i say say this after me say i am I am overkill. Overkill, exactly. But, but, I, but I, I, so I, I get it close to the mic. And say overkill. <laughs> you have the voice for that. Yeah. So yeah. No. Uh, and and we need to be these power bombs. Yes. Because Jesus came to destroy the works of the evil one. That's right. And and, and we have to be as he is. So am I. Yes. As he is, so are we. In yes. this world, and he was powerful. That's he, right. He, had, he was always multiplying things. Yes. He was always healing somebody, delivering yes. somebody, yes. raising somebody from the dead. You know, yeah. he raised somebody from the dead that was dead for forty days. Right. Not not just not, not just, just our buddy days, Lazarus. Not just Lazarus. Days, not just four days beyond, and and after four days he stinketh. Oh, yes. This mm. guy was dead for 40 days and mm. we won't get into that, mm. but we could discuss that another time. But anyway, here's the other question. Mm. If you could describe God in one word, uh, what would it be? First word. I always tell people, tell me the first word. First word. First word that came to mind, love. All encompassing love. Yeah. But yeah. mind you, power yeah. can be meek and love can be fierce. 
So in our culture, where when people hear the word love, they think namby pamby, you know, happy, ooey gooey. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, no, love can can be emotion, but love is also fierce. Love is also protective. Love is also um, speaking up. Love, love, gosh, man. The love of God. For God, God, yeah, for God so loved the world. The world. And when he gave himself. There's nothing that God no. will ask you to do that you hold back on when you know the love of God. Nothing. Ooh, that's nothing. it. That's 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 the see our identity starts with uh whose we are, not who we are. That's right. So Jeremiah 1 5. Oh, we lost I'm you. Here. Okay. Jeremiah 1 5 says, I knew you before you were in your mother's, mother's womb. womb. Come on. And I sanctified you before you were born. born. So yes. he, he I am my identity, and this is the identity crisis that a lot of people are, are, are in right now, is because they don't know whose they are. That's right. And when That's and, right. until you know that you are loved beyond, because what kept Jesus on the cross was love. That's exactly right. All the beatings and what kept him what kept him on the cross, but what kept him in the process yes. from the well, garden of Gethsemane the legion of angels that could, were ready, ready to, to stop the whole process. And he yeah. says, no, I'm here yeah. for love. Yeah. Michael is saying, put me in dad, put me in dad. I'm, That's right. <laughs> yeah. I'm burning up the bench here. Put me in dad. I need to go rescue Jesus. Mm-hmm. And Jesus stayed because he had to make it finished. That's there had right. to be a finishing. Come on. I, I, I love Jesus's finishing move. Right. <laughs> It, yeah. Anyway, uh, um, so we have been um, doing this series called "Creating with the Creators." Yes. And um, you're you are. Can you just share just a little bit? And I, and I'm going to do a spoiler alert. And you just got back from a private island yes. with Richard Branson and about yes. 40, 39 other CEOs from around the world. Yes, that were chosen billionaires, yes. CEOs, Fortune 500 people, and you were mingling with them. This is one of the places of journey mm. that a dedicated rapo chica rabunde kai, yes, a person to God. Yes, I'm, I'm telling you, not only not only is Christianity not boring, it's adventurous. It the is family an adventure. was on a private island with Virgin Mobile, Virgin yes. Phones, vir- Virgin, uh, virgin Cola, Records. Virgin everything. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and you're saying like, why are you bothering doing that? Well, where does light need to be? That's right. He That's is right. opening up doors, creative doors of opportunities. Yes. But can you just share just in a, a snippet, maybe about take a few minutes and just a little bit of your journey and just mm-hmm. whatever God has laid on your heart just right now. Come on. Um, so for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is Toyin Crandall. And if you came to me six years ago, I knew nothing about money. I had been in full-time ministry with my husband for years, over a decade. We were married for over a decade, but I'd been in that work. Um, I, I thought I would, like that was what I believed God had called me to for life. I was a lifer. And at one point, the Lord says, I'm calling you to full-time ministry. And I'm like, Abba, what have I been doing all these years? <laughs> what am I doing? And he said, full-time ministry. Um, and I thought, oh, maybe he's taking us from set because I would work, I would do ministry full-time seven months and go to work for five months part-time. So I'm like, yeah. oh, he just wants me to stop working. Anyway, long story short, he leads me into entrepreneurship and business. Guys, it took obedience to do that because it was yeah wildly scary yeah we go into business and i fell flat on my face okay? <laughs> yeah. we, it was so bad that within six months we had run out of food to eat for our family wow. and my this husband, was six years ago six this years ago six years ago y'all okay hey entrepreneurs people listening right now you need to understand Seven out of 10 things you start will eventually fail. This mm-hmm. is statistically one you'll break even and one will put you over. So you, right. you, one thing you got to have is thick skin and a hard forehead. Right. And you got to get up, dust yourself off and get I'm back on that. Hard. Yeah, That's go ahead. Right. Go ahead, Crandall. That's right. So we and, and all this time, like we hit the we hit the ground. Um, I didn't care about money. I was like, 
We've got genuine love. We've got genuine joy. We've got genuine peace. Who the, like, I didn't even think about money until the day that my husband, we had a six month old and I'm nursing her. We lived in a little box of an apartment and my husband's not eating dinner with me. And like, it's me and him and the baby. And I'm like, babe, where are you? Come eat with me. We don't, we don't even have a dining table. We don't have a living room. It was a kitchen and a hallway and the bedroom. So I said, where are you? He comes in the room and he says, um, oh, I'm eating in the kitchen. Wh- what are you eating as I'm eating? And he says, chocolates. And I say, what do you mean you're eating chocolates? He said, Twin, we're out of food. We've been out of food all week. And mm-hmm. I was, I've been eating chocolates. Mind you, it was December 2016. The chocolates he was eating weren't even ours. It was, you know, Chris, you know, Christmas when people yeah. give the gifts. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those Lynn chocolate gifts. And he said, You are feeding the baby. You need nutrients. Right. So I've been eating chocolates right. and giving you the last of our food. That right. was my wake-up call. That right. was the day that I yeah. realized, listen, you don't pay rent with joy. You don't buy groceries Mm. with peace. You do it with money. And I realized that so many of us as believers, because I was so afraid of fault, this is, this is me. Okay. My story. I was so afraid of the concept of falling into the love of money that I was afraid of money. And because of that day, God opened my eyes to see that in my fear of money itself, I actually shirked the calling that he had for me in business. And I was obeying him to run a proper business because I did not want because I was afraid of money. And guess what he said to me? He said, Toyin, what you fear, you worship. That's it. If you're afraid of money, guess what you've already done? You didn't want to put money above me, but in your fear of it, you've already put it above me because now you're not doing the thing I called you to do the way I called you to do it. And when he showed me that, y'all, I said, no, 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 no. Mm -mm, No. no. I fear only one. I only fear one. That's you. That's right. Not this. My God is Jesus Christ. And so what I did was in that moment where he opened my eyes to see Toy and you are walking in fear. And that's why you keep shutting down everything I give you that becomes successful. I made a decision with the Lord. I was angry, genuinely. And Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to be a millionaire in a year. Now, mind you, by the time this conversation was happening, we, this was months after the first revelation that we didn't have any money. At this point, we're in a worse place. We didn't <laughs> have place to stay. We had uh, sent out an email to friends and family asking for rent to help us with our rents and bills. Like things were worse. And I'm here saying I'm going to be a millionaire in a year. If money, yes. if I have been afraid of money and not doing what God has called me to do, then I'm going to show money that it ain't got nothing on me. Yeah. Now here's what's happened. Sin- summary. We did not hit a million dollars in a year, but we did it in three years. By oh. the time we hit the four year mark, we had multiple real estate properties. We Come had on. 11 different streams of income. We run a multi-million dollar uh, company. In fact, they're about to announce a big announcement about our company and its growth pace. I'm not, I, I'm not allowed to say all the details, but it's coming out in September that wow. our, our pace of growth in the nation of Canada Come has on. put us on list. Um, Barry has share, just shared with you guys. I was extremely honored to be invited to join CEOs from around the world to Richard Branson's private island just a couple months ago. And it, it, for those of you who may not know who Richard Branson is, like this man is one of the world's top philanthropists. His neighbor is like the CEO of Google. He owns the island be- beside him. You know what I mean? Like one of the top business uh, philanthropists and entrepreneurs on the planet. Yeah, um, he's a serial so- entrepreneur. Exactly. Serial entrepreneur, uh, done billions and billions of dollars and just the the privilege and the honor to be invited there to shine the light of Christ, to be who God has called me to be in those spaces. But more than that, to be able to do the work that I actually do. And the work that I do is in helping everyday people become multimillionaires by changing how they think about money so that they stop holding back the actual calling of God on their lives. That's who I am. So why? So I mean, a couple things. I mean, I'm going to I'm going to ask you this question in a second. So think about this. Um, Why do why should we Mm. 
want to be wealthy. Come on. Don't, don't jump in yet. Okay. But why okay. should we why should we want to be wealthy? How about us four? No more. Shut the door. Praise the Lord. And mm -hmm. we hunker down and wait to be rescued. Mm. Um, I mean, that that's kind of the mentality of a big 80% of the church is like, I'm going to stay, I got to stay holy. And I mean, that, small, to be, yeah, hold on. I, yeah and, and they use holy as a four letter word and not the, what it really meant to be. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. In but, fact, in fact, can I add so to what yeah, we yeah, use no, that word holy for? We yeah. say the word holy with the, the traditional mindset. Yeah. mindset that holy means poor. Yeah. Holy means you Set. can't have Jack. That's exactly. what they say. In <laughs> order to be the, the, the less I have, the, the closer More to holy. God I am. That's right. What they used to do to pastors is they keep them in a tiny uh, um, a parsnip, I think, or par not parsnip. Parsonage. Yeah, yeah, parsonage. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> parsnip, <laughs> I, I do the those. same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then, and, but we got to keep our pastor poor so we can keep him holy. Holy. And, and it's so interesting because one of the, like main, the, the biggest thing the Lord did was show me how many mindsets I had for yeah. myself that yeah. were based on tradition, that were based on conversation, but Lies. were not based on scripture. They yeah, weren't based, based on, on what he traditions wrote. Traditions of men. Life. That's exactly right. And yeah. even on that, that's something I talk about in my book. One of our chapters is in order to be holy, I have to be poor. I'm, I have to be poor to be holy. Yeah. And, and where's that? Do we have that book we could pull up oh, right where's now? Where's the book? Where's the book? There it is. I, Amazon, I should have a copy of the Amazon book. Money right? Mind Shift. Money church. Mindset Shift Church Edition. When I wrote this book, we work with people who are Christians and non-believers. And yeah, Jesus yeah, yeah. said, write this book for your brothers and sisters first. The top nine myths that keep Christians stuck financially, how to get unstuck, live debt free, and build wealth. So and why, one, why, okay, I'm, I'm going to ask you this question, but I, first I got to make a couple statements. Come on. Like, I, when, when between the time I was 28 to about, um, oh, 20 years ago, maybe now? No, not quite, maybe. I, I was in business and I made millions of dollars myself mm -hmm. and, but we had no sustainability because I didn't, I had the concept of surviving. That's right. And, and so God had to rebuke. Well, didn't rebuke me. So Tammy and I pray the Lord's prayer yes. as, as a, you know, where we are the, the construct of our prayer time. So our father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. We spend time praising him. And then we, you know, we get into, we, we do confessions of, of our, of the word of God, we yes. have, you know, different confessions we use. And then we, you know, then we move into asking God to come and minister to Toyin and Joshua Crandall and all those great <laughs> people and, and our sons and daughters in the spirit and, and our wow. biological children. And but then we get into, you know, our, our time where we um, ask for and we petition. Then we get to the place of forgive us our sins, forgive us our trespasses. We forgive oh, those yeah. who trespass against. And we would pray this prayer. Um, Father, forgive us for the lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, the pride of life, judgments in our heart, whatever God's mm -hmm. convicting us of, right? Mm -hmm. And then we say, forgive us for the sins of omission. Yes. So it's areas because of trauma. Yes. Areas because yes. Of, of hereditary curses and things that we don't know we're missing the mark and we're missing the mark. Right. And so he said to me one day, and we were mm -hmm. going from paycheck to paycheck at this mm -hmm. point, because mm -hmm. I closed down the store, because he told me to close down the store. That's another mm -hmm. story. And... um. And so he said to me one day to Tammy and I, as we're praying that he says, you have a survival mentality and you hmm. need to repent for your survival hmm. mentality. And you right. need to ask me for an abundant mindset. Right. Wow. That's he said that too. And wow. I want to tell you hmm. the confession of our mouths in hmm. faith to God, everything shifted from that moment. And we never right. went from paycheck to paycheck ever again. And that was years and years ago. So Come this on. is what the Lord told me, Toyin. And, and then, then you, I want you to just blast away at Come the on. question I just asked you. Yes. Is um, in, in, our, in our lives, um, we're trying to, we're trying to make it. We're trying to create and trying to survive in life. Right. And, and here we are at different precipices, and we we don't know what to do. Hmm. And and God is leading us, and trying to lead us, and trying to teach us, and trying to 
uh, you know, bring correction and bring people into our lives. But we have this these mindsets that need to right. shift and change. That's right. But he, but this is the fact of the matter. People don't receive who we are. They receive who we think we are. Mm. Y'all better write what he just said down. Yeah. Let me point this way. Yeah. Write what he just said down. Yeah. So people don't, hmm. and, and the, your body, right. and this is what the Lord has told me, because I am a spirit. I live in a body, but I, I possess a mind, a will, and emotions, my soul. So my, my, my body is the antennae. Mm -hmm. It receives and it transmits, but yep. it doesn't transmit who you are. It transmits who you think your you are. Your filter. Correct. That's why you have brilliant, talented, well knowledgeable people who often are not re they they are not rewarded or recompensed for the gifting that God has placed inside of them no, often because they themselves aren't aware of that level of gifting because most they of the time believe. we take for granted correct yeah. we don't really really we don't even we're, often we're not even willing to accept what God has gifted us in last night just this last night I sat with a client of mine. She yeah. runs a company. It does a couple million a year. And she said, okay, Toyin, I, I really need to reassess what my expenses are. Like, I feel like I'm on the wrong track. So we sat down for three hours. And in three hours, we were able to help this. I was able to help this woman uh, find $25,000 a month in business expenses that wow. we were going to save her by optimizing, not just changing, making her 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 business structure better, wow. saved her $300,000 in three hours, $300,000 a year. Yeah. Can you believe that when we finished the conversation, I posted on Facebook and I said, I am anointed. Come on. Do what I do. Yes. So many of us are anointed in a, in a thing, but we don't see it. We don't yes. recognize. And because well, we're not it's a, in it's a poverty mindset that we That's think. Right. That's I have right. to think less of myself. I have, to, I have to not acknowledge it. And can I be very practical, Barry? Absolutely. I, let, let's, let's be practical. For yeah. some of us, and because I used to do this, we we are so used to belittling the value that God places inside of us yeah. that even when you wear something nice, I came on this thing with my orange shirt. Barry said, this is a nice orange shirt. Many of us would respond with, oh, I just got it from here. Oh, the, we, yeah, I, that's something I just pulled out of the closet. That's just, right. I, yeah, we yeah. belittle it instead of thank you. Yeah. And boom, yeah. owning the value that God has placed on you. But wait, I want to touch on two things you said, because sure. there's one thing you said that we got to close that loop and let them know. The yeah. first, and then I'll do why, like, why, why should we even care about money? Is it yeah. blah, 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 money, this and that. The first one is this myth that yeah. the poorer you are, the holier you are. And mm -hmm. what I want to do is Shaka just Rota. share with y'all that yeah. here's what the word says. Yeah. Your First of all, holiness, the definition of holiness means to be set apart. apart. Set apart. It doesn't say you are, you have this amount of money in your bank account. And now can we just be very honest with ourselves? There are people who have no money and do not walk in holiness. Yep. Just like there are people who have a lot of money and do not walk in holiness. Yeah. Your bank account is not the statement for your relationship with God. In fact, in the book of Job, Chapter one, it yeah. said that Job was the, not one of them, the wealthiest man in the East. Yeah. The, the whole region, not a country, not a section, yeah. Yeah. the whole East. Yeah. He was blameless yeah. before the Lord. Right. So our bank account is not the qualifier for nope. whether or not we have a relationship with God. But I know that when I first came into this journey of reading the word for itself on the subject of money yeah. and not filtering it through the fear of falling into this place or that place, just tell me what the word says. That yeah. was one of the, the myths that God showed me. Toyin, you don't need to, to lack yeah. in order to yeah. have a on fire relationship with me. That's number one. Now yeah. let's talk about why it even matters for you to, to, to do well with money. And I'm just going to give a couple of reasons because we yeah. want to talk about how to create with the creator. And there's yeah. something I feel God has given for y'all to hear. Yeah. So the first thing is because of this, guess what? 
the work of the Lord requires money. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, so we don't we want to poo poo on the yeah. conversation, be like, oh, they're talking about money. They, you, yeah. I, I remember doing an event and somebody said, Toyin, you said the word money a lot. And I'm like, okay. Money. <laughs> it shows how much we have attributed character yeah. to money. Yeah. yeah. And money in itself is neutral. Yeah. Money is a tool. Money is like a television. It's you amoral. Television it's amoral. To- it's whose hands it's in. That's exactly right. You can use yeah. a television to share the gospel and you can use a television to put filth into the world. You can yeah. use money to buy Bibles. You can yeah. use money to pay translators. You can use money to pay missionaries and to sponsor them. You use, in fact, let, let's do it this way. Many of you guys who are listening right now, I want you to write in the comments or the chat or wherever you are, what is your favorite worship song today? I know it changes every four months, right? Yeah. But your favorite worship song today, just think about it, okay? I'm no longer a slave to fear or something or the other. Yeah, okay, yeah. great. Yeah. That very song was produced for you to hear it. That yeah. very song was marketed for you to hear it. Right. And the the people, I'm a, I'm a worship, I was a worship leader for 15 years. I have four different worship albums. I know the money <laughs> yeah. that yeah. goes into some. Producing. Of yeah. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. so the work of the Lord, number one, requires money. Number yeah. two, money can be used to demonstrate yes. the kingdom of God. Yeah. So the Bible says in the book of James that if somebody is in lack, somebody is in need, and yeah. they come to you and they ask you for something, it literally says you can pray for them. But if you pray for them and you have something to help them, then you do what? You help them practically. Yeah. It's, you even think about Salvation Army. You remember how Chris, yeah. William and uh, Chris Booth. Yeah, Booth, William Booth, I can't yeah. remember his wife's name, Christine, maybe. Um, the Booths. They were preaching the gospel and they noticed that the people couldn't pay attention to what they were saying because there was a physical, practical need that had not been met. And so the whole concept of the Salvation Army came in to say, let's meet their physical, practical need and pair that with the message of the gospel. Well, that's what Jesus did, right? That's right. He came in. I mean, he spent all his time. Yeah. Feeding them. That's and, right. And feeding them and feeding them. And then finally he started, you know, sharing with kingdom them. Kingdom of God yeah. has yeah. now come upon you. If you look at when he sent the disciples out, he said, heal the sick in the land, do all these things, and then proclaim that yeah. the kingdom of God has come upon them. So that's another reason. One other reason I will share is because money matters for your family. Yeah. Money yeah. matters for your witness with your yeah. family because. You know, I've talked to people who have said they, they're witness of the gospel because I was a street evangelist for years. Um, wow. So I, evangelism is like one of the top things for me. And I remember speaking to multiple people that right. have walked away from the kingdom right. because they said my parents, did, like they, they paid tithe, they gave money to church but they didn't take care of us. Like one woman right. said, I didn't yeah. have shoes to wear. And she, so what, it, what, and it's not to condemn anyone, but what it was, was that that person had not understood the way to manage money so that you can honor God and care yeah. for your family. Yeah. And that's I what don't, matters. Yeah. If I don't take care of my family, the Bible calls me less than somebody that doesn't believe in God. That's right. And so we can't ignore our right. responsibility to care for our family in the name of being spiritual. No. Um, and, and one more, one more, one more, only one more. The yeah, last yeah, yeah, one yeah. No, it's good. I love you. Is why does, why does this conversation matter? Read the book uh, in Matthew with the parable of the talents. Like when we talk about the parable of the talents, those of you who don't know what it is, you know, this master gave one talent to one one servant, two talents to another, five talents to another. The person with five doubled it to 10. The one with two doubled it to four. The one with one buried it. Okay. Yeah. Just for context. Here's the thing. In that scripture, in that story, 
we talk about it today because the word talent in today's generation yeah. means gifting, you know, yeah. your talents. So when we talk yeah. about it, we say, don't bury your talents. Don't yeah. hide the gift that God has yeah. given you. Yeah. But in that scripture, in context, he was talking about money. Money. He was saying, I gave a hundred dollars to this dude, two hundred dollars to this dude, five hundred dollars to this dude. This yeah. one multiplied, this one multiplied, and this one buried. But here's the thing: how many of us say to our like, if you talk to someone, Barry, pop quiz, pop quiz. Are you ready? Yeah. Yeah. When you yeah. die, what yeah. are the words, the first words you want to hear from God when you say, "Good stand and the door? faithful servant." Yes. Okay. So. All of us know that what we want to hear from God when we die, myself included, is well done, well you done. good and faithful servants. And yeah. guess what? That very phrase was spoken to someone in the word who yeah. stewarded money well. Well, yeah, yeah. And then he said to the one who did not, he said, you wicked and lazy servant unprofitable unprofitable servant so this is not my words because remember when i started studying this stuff yeah. i was team who cares yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and jesus was like let me have a conversation with you toyin about what the word actually says about money we have a poor eschatological view yes because we have a poor uh ecclesia Ecclesia. Mm. We have a poor um, uh, view of the church. We have a poor idea of of the gospel and the great commission. We mm -hmm. we 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 think we think we get saved and then we want to do it the mm -hmm. world's way almost, and we can't. We have to have supernatural principles. That's so right. let me just share a couple other scriptures scriptures with you. The Bible says it says wine is made. Uh, food is made for feasting. Wine is made for Mary, and money solves all problems. Mm -hmm. That's a scripture it verse. Say that in Ecclesiastes. Yeah, and, and in Deuteronomy eight eighteen, I promised you this day that I would your forefathers that I would give you the power to obtain wealth. Why? So you yeah. could establish the covenant in the land. That's right. I mean, that's how we, he confirms his covenant. Yeah, and then Third John two, beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So we need this this thing to prosper. Right. We need, we need our mind, our will, and our emotions to be transformed. Yeah. My spirit has been reformed. Yes. My mind yes. has to be transformed. Yes. So my body and my spheres of influence can be completely and totally restored. Yes. And so we have to get rid of these poverty mentalities. Yeah. And because, and I think we're answering the question, right? And get rid of the fear. Yeah. Because I feel that it is genuinely a spirit yeah. of fear yeah. that causes us yeah, to there's... be afraid to even look at these verses. We hear yeah. them and, and some of you guys are listening. You've heard these verses and once you hear it, you tune out. No, that can't yeah. be for me. This yeah. is scripture. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it, the thing is, is that we need to be able to be the answer. This is what the Lord has shared with me over the last several, several months, maybe a couple of years now. Mm. It says, get ready for revealed mysteries, mm. affluence, and influence. Mm. So revealed mysteries are going to give us creativity that we need. That's right. Bringing us into moments of affluence. And if you look in the Webster's Dictionary, and the number one first definition of affluence is a lot of money money <laughs> this brings to you influence mm. in your community mm. if you're if as i am about to build wells right and clean water in right. reserves in the north country of our nation that have third world conditions right uh, this is a this is i'm and i'm and I'm pursuing this and we're not, we're not digging our force well yet or anything like that, but this is where I, it's in my heart to do. Yes. This takes money. Yes. So as soon as I can do this, have the money to do this, right. I will have affluence. Yes. And, and influence yes. with the leadership. Yes. We need to really be living this very full life because I am separate. I'm separate set apart, separated unto God. Not yes. to, see, he, <clears throat> the ecclesia, or, 
and and the you know the church i'm building my church the ecclesia uh, the ecclesia is being built but they were the 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 definition of ecclesia is pulled out from up into empowered mm. and sent back in with mm. a judgment of rulership mm. that's who we are come on and we need to start governing properly and taking care of our communities we're stewarding, stewarding what God but you, into you our know, absolutely you know, sl slavery is not confinement Mm. Slavery is taking somebody's responsibility from them. Mm. That means I don't have authority with with my children or anybody unless I I have responsibility for them and mm. relationship with them. Mm. So when you take somebody's responsibility from them, you're taking their purpose mm. from them. Mm. If you take a person's purpose from them, they're a slave. Mm. Now, it's funny because you said a scripture just now that yeah. goes directly into the conversation that we wanted to talk about that I, I, I really wanted us to hit on, which is. Okay, we're, Toy, we're 40 minutes in. We are 40 minutes in. We are 40 minutes in. <laughs> what, can you stick around for a, another podcast? Can we cut another one? Let's do it. I'm, okay. I'm in. Okay. I'm down. And we. We got to talk about that creating with the creator. We're gonna because we're gonna hit that, are, but, but but this was a great today introduction. Was what I think people heard the yeah. foundation that they need to hear. Yeah. In yeah. order to be able to set their mind free to actually think and create with the creator. Yes, amen. So you can go to moneymindsetshift.ca. What can they find? What resources can they find there? When you go to moneymindsetshift.ca, you will see a free masterclass, which is a training that we run on exactly what our process looks like for helping people radically transform their finances and their minds to the glory of God. Amen. So um, Millionaire Money uh, Podcast. Oh, yes. So that's that's the podcast that I host, the Millionaire Money Podcast. Check it out. Uh, link. Link tree slash millionaire money podcast. Um, but it is, it, we talk about all things, growth, wealth for whether you're a business owner or a career professional, you will have content there. That's going to serve your life. So they can get, they can contact you through your web, website. your Correct. website. You can put that back up. Yep. yep. So money mindset shift.ca. You, you can get like they can get a hold of you if, if they wanted uh coaching that's right. or yeah. that's exactly right. So you're, you're coaching people in businesses and you know how they could also find me. We are having an event coming up in uh, October. Oh, there it is, right there. Money there mindset shift.ca backslash bulletproof. Bulletproof. All right. So we are doing an event called Bulletproof. It's happening in Atlanta. This is actually an event that is normally reserved for I have a group called Millionaire Mastermind. And normally we we do three different retreats just for this room of six, seven figure business owners. And for the first time ever, I felt the Lord say, Toyin, I want you to open up this one time wow. to the public to be able to come into the room. And we are not gonna be coaching as if you're new. We are coaching our millionaires because they're gonna be yeah. in the room, yeah. but you get to be in the room and receive the full experience. Ooh. Uh, that we pour out on our millionaire mastermind and so it is happening just like one week from now it's going to be october 26 to 28 you want to go to money mindset shift.ca forward slash bulletproof and sign yeah. up let's yeah. go it's going to be in yeah. atlanta it's going to be a lot of fun <laughs> okay um toyin love you thank love you, you for sharing your heart your your anointing uh with us and just before we we pull you off and uh, I, I say goodbye to the, our listeners. Can you just pray for them and release that yes. anointing of what, what we've been just operating in? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Father, I thank you so much for your children that are listening to this podcast. I thank you for the ones that have listened to previous episodes and the ones that are coming after Abba. And I thank you, Father, that your thoughts toward them are good and not evil to give them a future and a hope. And yeah. Father, I pray for each one that is listening and saying, Abba, 
I have read these scriptures. I have seen these promises, but I do not know how to actualize them in my life. And I ask God for a spirit of wisdom. Yes. And Abba, I pray that you would open up eyes to see clearly. I, I pray, Father, that in areas where it is out of a lack of just practical knowledge, that you would open up doors for access to practical understanding that we would be able to implement, to see the fruits of the promises that you have given to us. Father, I pray for the ones that are saying, I hear this, but I genuinely don't believe it. Like it is th that are stuck in that poverty mindset and don't know how to be set free. And right now we speak to yes. every false spirit. We speak Ooh. to every lie of the enemy that yes. is speaking over anyone that is listening and saying that they lack the value, that the promises of God that are written in the word are for everyone else but them. And we come against we it in the that. name of Jesus. Father, the says that at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow and every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so Father, we declare over the, the fear of money, we declare over a poverty mentality, we declare over a spirit of stagnancy and we say in the name of Jesus get out of those who are bound by it in the name of Jesus father we release your spirit over each one father we release your abundance over each one father we i recognize personally your hand over our life over our family and the way that you have turned us around more than we could have asked thought or imagined so father i declare a blessing over each one that is listening that they will be blessed when they come in they will be blessed blessed when they go out that father your blessing Ooh. would encompass yes, them God. that it would chase them down and overtake them and i pray father that they would do the practical things that are necessary to step into what you have for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you guys agree with that, you say amen, so be it, or whatever. I'm picking up what she's throwing down. <laughs> wow. Thank Bye. you, Toy. And so you. bless you, love you, and uh, we'll talk. we'll talk real soon. We'll get we'll you right talk. back on. All okay. right. Thanks, Barry. Bye, everyone. So isn't that, wasn't that awesome? My God, my God, that was so good. Um, you need to get a hold of some of Toyin's uh, resources. You can go to um, moneymindsetshift.ca and you can, you get resources there. Uh, this was amazing. I didn't see us going down this exact road, but this is the exact road we needed to go down on because you need to be in a place where you can fulfill your purpose and get to a place where you can dream again and believe again. It's hard to dream a better day when you, when you don't have food in the cupboard. It's hard to dream. It's hard to have hope when you're, when you're, when you're not in the midst of his will. You need to ask God, where's my there? Where do you need me to be and what do you need me to be doing? So I bless you guys today. We have some exciting news coming up uh, that I'm going to start releasing very, very shortly about a um, leadership advance. It's called Ascending the Summit, and it's going to be happening November 3rd and 4th of this year, and it's going to be in Kingston, Ontario. And I'm I'm going to be presenting four times with to a, only 100 people, leaders in the room, of how to not just survive life, but how to climb and maximize your potential and, and get the gift settings and the tools you need to take the summit that God is calling for you to, because we must make the kingdoms of this world, the kingdoms of our God. And, and it's taking place. And I want to fortify you. So details are coming and will be on my website at barrymiracle.ca. Um, and, very, very shortly. And so pay attention, pay, uh, stay tuned because this is going to be awesome. Anyway, love you guys. If you want any more resources, you can go to barrymiracle.ca and we can, um, you know, give you some confessions. We can, you can, you can sew in there. You can get, a, you know, onto our YouTube channel, Facebook, everything. Uh, and I have a lot of resources of things I've written and also you can get a hold of my book called wake up into your dream. Anyway, uh, bless you guys. And until next week, Barry Miracle signing off. Bye now.